Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. I want you to imagine for a moment, it is summertime. You might be looking for something fun but affordable to do with your kids. It's hot and you just want to get out of the house. So a splash pad seems like a perfect place to go. You pack up your daughter as you head in the car. Just after 5 p.m., you get to the splash pad in Rochester Hills in Michigan. And the first thing that you do is head over to help yourself to some ice cream available. When all of a sudden you hear the horrifying sounds of gunshots being fired. This unfortunately is a terrifying reality for two parents and their two daughters. Sadly, this just seems to be coming more and more of a common occurrence, but not at a splash pad. Uh, luckily, due to the quick thinking, they were able to protect their daughters, who to this day, their identities are protected, but they were safe. However, for Michaela and Eric, they had been shot seven times and as of Monday, June 17th, remain in the hospital in critical condition. It is a completely selfless act of love that a parent showed children. So unfortunately, today we're going to be covering the mass shooting that took place on June 15th. Um, I don't know where I can go with my kids anymore where I don't feel somewhat paranoid. It, it was schools, and then it's movie theaters, and then it's malls, and now it's splash pads. So on June 15th, just around 11, a gunman showed up, got out of his vehicle at the splash pad, and opened fire. According to witnesses, the scene was completely chaotic, as you can imagine. Now for a second, if you don't know what a splash pad is, I'll insert a photo, but basically it's concrete with water fixtures, and kids run around and they just go through sprinklers and it's a lot of fun. Anytime I've ever been, my kids thoroughly enjoy it and I have always felt safe there up and up until I read this story. So just for a minute, imagine this scene. You have water on concrete. What happens when water and blood mixes? It would have been straight out of a movie. Like horror, horror. Everybody's running. Ice cream is flying. Flip-flops are covered in blood. Horrific. Like, I can't even, that would, <sighs> so the gunman arrives at the splash pad. He gets out of his vehicle. He unloads originally what was thought to be 28 rounds, reloading multiple times, mind you. He fired, unloaded his magazine, reloaded, fired again, and then reloaded again three magazines. Police arrived on scene in under two minutes and already the gunman was gone. The police had originally found 28 empty shell casings, but they ended up bringing in a tactical dog who specializes in searching for missing components. So after the dog was brought in, the number went up to 36 shell casings. In addition to the magazine that was still inside of the Glock found at the scene, there were two other additional magazines found. This is important for two reasons. One of the magazines did not match up with the Glock that was found at the scene because it only carried six rounds, which would line up more with a revolver. So even though they only found the Glock at the scene, this told investigators and police that there was another weapon involved. And secondly, because the magazines were left at the scene, it was registered to the owner. So it didn't take police long to find their suspect considering they found these magazines left at the scene and they breached his home using a drone. Allegedly, when there was a standoff with the officer and the suspect at his home, the officers did not actually hear a gunshot, but they believe that the suspect unalived himself during that standoff. When the police entered the home, they actually found another weapon just lying out on the kitchen table. The gun left on the table was a semi-automatic rifle, kind of leading the police to believe that the suspect had more plans to commit more violence later on. Upon further investigation, the police ended up finding 11 more weapons in the home. I'm going to put pictures up here while I list off these weapons. I'm a very visual person. You tell me a Glock, I'm going to... I don't really know what to vision until I did this video and actually looked it up for myself. So as I go through this list, I will include the weapons that this man had in his home. I have somebody here who knows more about weapons than I do. So while I talk about these, I do want his input because I guess three out of these 11 were handguns. Correct. Three of them were handguns. The Glock 43 and the Glock 19 semi-automatic pistol, which were found at, the look at his home, along with a revolver. The revolver 
has a six round capacity, which was one of the magazines that was found at the splash pad. That, however, was not the handgun that was left at the splash pad. That was the Glock 43, which led authorities to believe that the murder weapon that, uh, that he used at the splash pad was also the same thing that he took his life with. That was the revolver. So I'm going to just list these off real quick. I just wanted to put that input there. He, he's much more knowledgeable about weapons than I am, so I thought that was good input. Um, but what was found was a Glock 19 semi-automatic handgun, a Sears 30-30 rifle. <laughs> Is it Mossberg 410 or 410? It's a Mossberg 410. I don't want to get yelled at. Mossberg 410 bolt action shotgun. Spikes tactical yes. AR model multi-cal 223 right. rifle? Right. So, so this thing. <laughs> that makes no sense to me until I Google it. A Spikes Tactical is a very well-made performing assault rifle, but it's a platform base, which means it can be modified. I'm not trying to cut him off. I do I do truly value it, your opinion. You know I do. But and I agree, but I'm just saying for this particular right. to not cause <laughs> a the pitch box. We have a Browning lever action 22 rifle, a Marlin bolt action 22 rifle, a Remington. We're gonna speed round this Remington 243. I wrote I wrote bold, but right. bolt action rifle, a Winchester 12 gauge pump. What what did that say? A bolt action. Bolt action is basically. Oh, is that the bolt? No, that's <laughs> that's when you slide your bullet in. Bolt action is literally when you are feeding the round that's into the chamber. That's bolt action? Bolt action. You're, so like, you, when you see them, and they're sliding the uh, bullet into the chamber. That's bolt action. Oh, yeah. So you learn something I new every day. Shooting. We have the Mossberg 22 caliber bolt action. So another, another rifle? How many rifles does this man have? Uh, any one of these could have been brought to the splash pad is the point that I'm getting at. Uh, can you imagine if you brought there, there may have been a high casualty count. A Western Field 410 pump action shotgun, a 22 caliber Rough Rider single pistol, which is the gun that we're just suspecting is what he used to actually unalive himself. I have to. I have to. He's making fun of me for saying I unalive. I have to because they censor everything. So I can't really you say like, say I can't really say like G-U-N. I have, I've slipped up, I've left it in there, whatever. But I try to say, some people say pew pew, some people say weapon, some people say firearm. And what's the wildest thing is that this suspect who is, uh, we'll name him real quick. He's a 42 year old man by the name of Michael William Nash. He had no criminal history. He was pulled over in 2016. He had a traffic infraction. So there was no record of him getting in trouble with the law. Uh, and I think that's the scariest part, how you can go from literally just being a, a common citizen, seemingly abiding by common law, and then go to mass murder. Uh, can I say murder, or should we say red rum? I don't know what's appropriate anymore. It's 2024, and I can't say a damn thing without censoring this is myself. exactly the reason he was <laughs> capable to get as many rifles and weapons and shotguns as he did. So this man had no criminal record, okay? We're overlooking the fact that maybe, maybe not, whatever your opinion is, there is no current monitoring. Thank you, I need to drink up of this because we'll my... First. <laughs> oh, all right, I don't even know if I can do that on camera anymore. Pause, so, I'm going to take yeah, a shot. Pause. This man lived with his mom, who allegedly wasn't home at the time of this incident. So a family member ended up speaking with a sheriff named Michael Bouchard. And the family member is not listed. This is my own speculation that it might be his mom who the sheriff is speaking to, considering he lives with her. She would be the one to kind of see um, patterns in her son. Maybe not everybody would see on a daily basis. Basis. So based on what I'm about to say next, I am saying that maybe this is coming from her mom, I, from his mom. I don't know for sure. I am going to read from the paper because it is a quote, um, but it says that the suspect was paranoid that the government was listening to us. They are watching us. Turn off your phone. He would walk around the household with a hand pew pew, a handgun. I think I've said it a thousand times at this point talking like that. So 
whoever this family member was, again, I'm speculating maybe his mom, but I'm just going to say family member. This family member saw Mr. Nash, who is our suspect in this story, walking around, holding his weapon, talking about the government as conspiracy theories and a little uh, kind of questionable behavior. Was it enough to be reported? Obviously not, but he went from zero to 100. Maybe he left like a diary or some sort. So there is some investigation going into that to try to find motive because as of right now, there is no motive. So it has been told that there has been nine victims, including two children. This really hits hard because literally out of three of the victims, one of them is my age. We have a uh, two 30-year-old woman. I'm 31, so two women my age. We have an eight-year-old boy who was shot in the head who as of Monday, the day that I'm filming, June 17th, is still currently in the hospital, but it does look like he's making really good strides toward recovery. There was also a four-year-old boy. I have a four-year-old son and a nine-year-old daughter. Like, these are my kids' ages. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. And I really hope that in those moments, I wouldn't have that fawn freeze like instead of fight or flight you have the freeze I would hope in the moment that I would do what Eric and Michaela were able to do and I assume throw their bodies over their daughters because they were shot but they protected their daughters so I hope to God that in those moments I don't think I will just throw myself over my children and protect them, I would gladly take a bullet for them. We have a 37-year-old female. We have two 39-year-old females. We have a 40 and a 48-year-old male. We have a 40 and a 78-year-old male. As of Monday, June 17th, this was released around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, the eight-year-old boy who was shot in the head remains in critical condition, but it is looking on the bright side that he may make some recovery. What those damages will be, only time will tell. Out of the nine victims that were shot at the splash pad, two of them have been released as of today. I apologize, I may have gotten his age wrong. I wrote 77. I have like I don't know if I have like dyslexia or something. One of the victims is either 77 or 78 years of age, but he was released today as well as one of the 37-year-old the woman was also released today. And there seems to also be a third woman victim who is looking to be released later this evening. For me, it is later this evening, so hopefully she's getting released as I'm recording this video. I will include any GoFundMes I can find for the victims in the description of the page as well. Detroit Detroit is filled with such good people but has just been, I feel like the US kind of turned its back on Detroit ever since the decline of the car manufacturer manufacturing Detroit as resilient of a city as it is and basically had to start over. My heart goes out for Detroit. I feel like it is such a hurt city that just needs so much love and healing because when I tell you that this story was only one out of three mass shootings taking place in Detroit on Saturday. I'm not even going to get into the other mass shootings in today's video because then this is going to be two hours long, but I am thinking about making videos on it. So if you do want to hear about the other two mass shootings that happened on June 15th in Detroit on Saturday, I don't know what the heck happened that weekend. My heart bleeds for them sincerely. I'm just grateful that I'm not reading about casualties and I hope that these victims and these families can heal from this and that it doesn't traumatize them. I can imagine, can you imagine like being these, oh my god, can you imagine being those two little girls who were saved and then like they are going to grow up and be mothers one day and like how scary splash pads are going to be to them. Like my parents were shot at splash pads when we were young. They didn't release information about the girls and how old they were, but it's like, huh. anyways, I hope you guys enjoy today's video. I hope you just enjoyed the content that I was able to give you and the information that I was able to research and find for you guys. Oh my god, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. We got to stop. We gotta stop. Nothing is that serious. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video.